Let's do deep cuts. Yeah. Name a song, album, or artist that changed your life. Oh, song, album, or artist that changed my life, man. Um, it's really cliche, but Smell Like Teen Spirit was one of them. Actually, you know, and, and I probably wasn't even Smell Like Teen Spirit. It was Know You're Right was one of them that, that really hit me. Wow. Yeah, Know You're Right was one of those songs yes. that like, that really that really changed the, altered the path of what I, w- I was to do, you know, because like, I don't know. It just hit me differently. But also, I mean, I had to throw Michael Jackson there too. It's, it's like yeah. toss-up. It's such a hard one to do. But I think Michael Jackson would be the artist that did that for me, you know, Absolutely. And, I, and everything that he did. And it really wasn't, you know, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Michael was a great singer. But it wasn't his singing that did it, you know. It was his delivery that did it for mm-hmm. people. You know what I'm yes. saying? I don't know that there's been an artist since him that was able to convey an emotion in a song in the same way that he does, you know. Uh, and so that's, I think, that's what really did it for me was that was that emotion in his voice, and that's what I'm always chasing, always chasing. How do you, how do you convey this feeling right now that you're having, you know, into the song? You know? He sang with his soul and his body and Absolutely. his heart. He gave everything he could. It, I mean, he couldn't even control his body. It's he crazy. had to like give to the song. I mean, it's just you're right. He's, Absolutely, it will never be like that ever again. No, and that's what, and I'm always chasing that man. I'm always chasing this idea, like like you know we're. We're glorified voice actors at the end of the day, mm-hmm. right? It's mm-hmm. like we sure we all sing, but like what we're really trying to do as recording artists is convey an emotion on this record that that hits you in your heartstrings. Yes. That's something that you can relate to, you know. And so um, I think that Michael was one of the best of them. What was your first concert? <laughs> Incubus, man. Oh, it's the best. That's so good. Incubus, Incubus, my boys. Like, I, I played Ultimate Frisbee, so I was always around like these white kids, you know. <laughs> 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 and uh, and they, they took me, it, it, it was like, oh man, I was, and this, they really got me into rock and roll too. I mean, I would be on these long drives playing Ultimate Frisbee with these kids. So we'd be, you know, traveling from Seattle to Eugene. Hey, there's, there's an Ultimate Frisbee uh, tournament in Eugene. No way. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know Eugene had Frisbee. Of course they have Frisbee. It's Eugene, Oregon, dude. <laughs> uh, That's incredible. So, so we had these long drives and we just listened to rock and roll, man. I'll never forget, man. You know, and they're more privileged than I was. They're all in private school and stuff like that, you know, and they, they really embraced me as, as their friend and like companion, you know, and so, uh, but uh, <laughs> I'll never forget it, man. We went to this Incubus concert. I was like 15 years old and I was wearing like, I don't even, I was like wearing these like blue jeans, blue suede shoes. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> Dude, do you remember those old like uh, like nylon shirts? They would print like tigers on them, you know. So of I, I was all flossed out. Of I've got course. blue suede shoes. I got these blue jeans and my and my blue and white tiger shirt. And I thought you I were was, not holding back. I thought I was the shit. Yeah, you're uh, like Brandon Boy. Check me out. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And so I went to watched, went to watch <laughs> Incubus, and it was just blew my mind. I had never been to a big concert like that. You know, I've been like like some like Christian stuff at the church and led like, through some Christian concerts and things like that. But like never like a real concert. And we were at the Key Arena, and I'll never forget that. That was one of the the, the coolest moments, man. It was just like, and they're an incredible band. Oh, it was another amazing. band fusing so many different things. Absolutely. You know, having a DJ on stage oh. and the table. I mean, it's like. They're another great example. Dude, if you listen to, I have a, an album, I should have brought that for you too, actually. I have an album called Audio Paint Job that you can't get anywhere, you know, because when we were getting signed, right. they had to, they, they repackaged everything. So they pulled you everything, take everything out, down. took everything down, yeah. repackaged you, and they put you back out, you know. But I have, so I have a closet full of these Audio Paint Job records. And if you listen to this record, I have DJs and stuff. Yes. Like, I'm chasing Incubus. I'm trying to chase okay. this out, you know, yeah. which is a little outdated now. I mean, at the point that I did, I look back and I was like, what was I doing? I was trying to like, force these things to happen so let them ha- happen organically you know but yeah but they're part of your journey absolutely you know they absolutely. are they're important and part of it because you can't become you until you've tried everything absolutely to realize who you are absolutely you man. Know? so but Incubus had a big influence on me early on I wanted to be like them for, <gasps> I forever I love Incubus man. Yeah, That's, I wonder do the guys know that story I feel like I gotta share that with them I don't know if they do okay. yeah, I, they, they, it was a key arena they were on tour with uh, it was Alien Ant Farm was opening for oh me. so good yeah dude and I'll never forget that man. it was, it was a cool concert I'm 15 years old and I, and I like like, like I, one of my dudes was like the, your typical, like two thousands, you know, douchey white boy. I loved him, but he was like one of those, those, those dudes, you know, like one yeah. of those, like, like American pie guys, you know, she's mm-hmm. like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I love yeah. it. Bring it back to Michael Jackson, the Alien Ant Farm Smooth Criminal Dude, uh, cover. Oh, it it's was amazing. great. Amazing. It was great, man. Yeah. I, it was wonderful. I mean, I'm never that, that that hit back in the day. That man. cover was so. See, everybody loves Michael Jackson. Yeah. I mean, he's inspired everyone. Yeah. So my my homie had so my my like my like American Pie friend had, had, had like slipped. American the, Pie friend. It was the first time. It was the first time he I drank anything. I never drank before. Really, he goes drink this drink this this bottle. He's like it's mostly water. I'm like mostly water. What's in it, buddy? You know. <laughs> 
so I'm like halfway drunk. I'm like, I, dr- I chug this thing, dude. And it's <laughs> oh got vodka. God. It's like water vodka mix, yeah. you know? And I'm 15 years old, 130 pounds. Oh, like, my God. And I was like, oh, this is wonderful. I love music. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So that was my experience. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Oh, my God. If you were not a musician, what would you be? Oh, probably an actor. An actor. Yeah, right? probably an actor. I'm really obsessed with this. Yeah. I really want to see you go into this oh, arena. I, I, yeah. was, I was a really, really good actor um, in high school. It's because, you know, I used to, when I was raised with my grandmother and, and, and my mom was really into this too, but they would always watch soap operas. And that's all they watched. And I'm a mm-hmm. little kid, you know, there's no, there's only one TV in the house. So I'm like observing these. I'll never forget when somebody first saw me act and they were like, we didn't even know you could do this. Wow. Because I was watching the, these shows all the time and how serious they'd be. Yeah. So Sarah's, dramatic. Sarah's dying. <laughs> <laughs> That's she only has 24 hours to live. You're like Prince and General Hospital. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Dude. So, uh, but no, in high school, I was, I was, I won the best actor award uh, for this drama. Every, I think every school has like a drama that has drama. Yeah. Drama fest is what we had. And like yeah. panel of like these really prominent actors in Broadway and movies. And so like they sit and they watch and like, so I ended up winning the best actor award for my play along with like a guy who actually went on to be a Broadway star, you know, uh, his name was Taylor Maxwell, man. And so that is, uh, that's, that was my path. If it wasn't for music. Oh, yeah. It still can be. Yeah, it, it still, still can, can be. be. I, hope, I hope it will be, you know. What is something fans would be surprised to learn about you? Surprised to learn about me. I think, uh, I th- probably how, how down to earth I am maybe, you mm-hmm. know, like I think being from Seattle is like, it's not like being from Hollywood or LA, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I was talking to Duff about this stuff, McKagan yeah, back in, in, in France. We were backstage at, at Hellfest and we're sitting in their little, you know, the Guns N' Roses area. And we're just talking about what it means to be from Seattle. Oh. We're just casual people in Seattle. We don't really do the whole lights in Hollywood and all that stuff. Although that's nice. That's why I'm wearing these Chanel's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But although that's nice, but it's like, it's not like, it's not, it's not who we are. And mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm always really approachable. Um, I try to be approachable to the fans and stuff like that to a point. I mean, there's obviously there's a safety issue of at some course, points, but yeah. like, I try to be approachable and loving and caring and open to, to hear from people, you know. If you could meet any celebrity dead or alive, who would it be? Oh man, this is a hard one. Dead or alive. Chris Cornell. Yeah. Chris Cornell. Yeah. Yeah, would be Chris Cornell. I think that would be the one. I, I could say Michael Jackson, those guys, but I, I, I would still freak out. I think that. Me and Chris would just be able to talk and like, have some things to talk about, you know. Absolutely. And you know, I think Chris would be would be a good one. Are there words you live by? So after that first tour, um, I, I got really gotten close to to Zach Meyer from Shine Down, and um, I'll never forget we we texted you. I said, "Man, I didn't really get to see you very much, but I love you, man." And like, we don't thank you for everything. You guys are so cool. And he sent me this long text, and the first thing he says, he goes, "Everything in moderation, including moderation." I think that was my that those are the words I live by. You know, like everything in moderation. Always keep yourself balanced. Uh, always make sure you keep yourself in check and check in with yourself, but don't cut yourself off from celebrating yourself to the point, you know, to don't, don't cut yourself off to the point to where you can't celebrate yourself or enjoy what you've built, you know, and have some fun, you know, but don't lose yourself in it. You know? Oh, that's, that's the best advice. It's the, that it's, is the greatest, it's the greatest advice. It's the greatest, you know, cause we work so hard, but I mean, you work hard too. Yeah. I know you work hard. Like we work so hard. You put your head down so much. And there actually really isn't much time to celebrate yourself as you're going, going, going. And, uh, you know, if you don't take that time, though, it doesn't really set the marker for you. It doesn't create a moment that you realize, like, I'm doing it, you know? Absolutely. Perspective is key. It is. You always need to kind of, like, take yourself out, be in the moment, and assess everything. So you're actually living while it's happening instead of having it go pass you by. Absolutely. You know, it's like, I constantly do that all the time. I use my kids as a grounding force, too, sometimes, you know? Like if I'm just feeling overwhelmed, I sort of take myself out of it. Like look at my kids, focus for a second, kind of brings everything down to earth. Absolutely. You know? 100%. I mean, yeah. I, I, that, that, that's when I, we talked about that earlier, yeah. about how my family just like, they don't care about the right. rock star, man. They, they want to see you and they want you to just like put all that away for a moment, you know? And like they, they get that they are. I mean, my kids walk out in sunglasses, leather jackets and filthy hats all oh, the time. Like they so get who they sweet. are. But they're not, they're not cut. That's not, that's not who they are though. You know right, what I'm saying? Like course. that's just, that's just the name that our family has and the image that we've created for ourselves and not like who we are. We're here for each other and they, and they keep me grounded. You know? That's so beautiful. What do you hope to achieve next? Like you're going to come back. You said you're going to do another album. Yeah. Like where do you hope to see yourself? Maybe even in the next, you've done so much in two, three years. Where yeah. do you see yourself in the next Five years, man. I, I'm hoping that I, I've found my way to the big screen at some point. Yeah. you know, at, at least a cameo on TV or something. I don't know, but I, 
you know, I hope, I hope I found myself on the big screen at some point. Uh, but also, man, you know, I know it's cliche to say this, but it, it'd be nice to win a Grammy, you know, and, and, and like, and you, and you know how these things are too. Yeah. Like those, those things are definitely have a lot, a lot of politics involved and, and a mm-hmm. lot of smoothing and, and getting to know people and, and associating yourself in certain circles and things like that. But like to have that recognition would be, would mean a lot to me, you know, Absolutely. and so that, that'll be great too. But more than anything, man, I, I just like, I want to get back on the, on the screen. You know, I want, I want people to actually see me because like a lot of this is the first time you are the first person to actually have a long form conversation conversation with me and in a, in a podcast setting, like a face-to-face podcast setting. I've yeah. done some online stuff. Right. You're the first person to do it. So cats are really getting to know me for the first time, really. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, it's awesome, you know, that cats really get to see me and stuff like that. So hopefully I can continue this. This will start a trend. We can continue of this. Of course. And find, our, find our way in, into the, the minds and imaginations of people at home, you know? Well, I have known from the start how special and unique you are. Thank you. So That's so sweet. Anytime I can help get you in front of people so that they can also share this magic, yeah. I feel grateful. Oh, I, oh, that's so sweet of you. Yeah. I have so much love for you and your family and your beautiful, growing, large family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are very fertile. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a blessing. It's a gift. It is. I'm, I'm 100%. I'm, I'm always, that's, I mean, out of all the blessings in my life, that's, that's the greatest I have right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you, Aaron. But thank you for having me. 